Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Madison Sawyer. We begin with breaking news. At least three people are dead and several injured following a train derailment. Thank you for joining us. I'm Madison Sawyer. Remembering 9-11 20 years later. This is CBS 11 News This Morning. The Ones for Texas. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the State Fair of Texas. We have finally made it to State Fair Friday. I'm Madison Sawyer, and today I am live from the State Fair, bringing you all the ins and outs. The 100 car pileup. Madison, what do we know about this? We'll take a look at the text.com cam, and you can see the vast emergency response related to this crash. And Annalise, unfortunately, it looks like this is going to continue throughout the day. It sure is, Madison. Yeah, so the snow has moved on, but now the focus turns to that bitter cold. That's about $999,885 more than what I would <laughs> typically spend on a bottle. I like to spend $15 or less. I'm that person that walks around Costco and goes, oh, $14.99, that's too expensive. I'll go to the $12.99 bottle. Uh, so definitely not for me. Live from Dallas and Fort Worth, this is CBS 11 News at 10. The ones for Texas. Thank you for joining us. I'm Madison Sawyer. Remembering 9-11 20 years later, former President George W. Bush paid tribute to the nearly 3,000 victims and first responders, as well as members of the military who answered the call of duty. And tonight at the Bush Library in Dallas, the former president spoke about one of the nation's most memorable moments just days after the terror attacks. Jack Fink was there tonight. And a live look at the 9-11 Memorial at Ground Zero, where people have been gathering all day. And in the background, you can see what's known as the Tribute and Light. 88 searchlights all arranged into two columns to represent the Twin Towers. Ceremonies were held today in New York at the Pentagon and outside Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where Flight 93 went down. Former Presidents Obama and Clinton joined President Biden at the memorial in Lower Manhattan, where the tradition of loved ones reading the names of each life lost returned to Ground Zero. I remember this day as if it was yesterday. My cousin, Brian Christopher. Dad, we miss you every day. Our greatest gifts are your beautiful grandchildren. Former President Trump did not attend any of those ceremonies. Instead, he visited a New York police station and firehouse where he praised first responders and criticized President Biden over the handling of the pullout from Afghanistan. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Madison Sawyer. We begin with breaking news. At least three people are dead and several injured following a train derailment today in Montana. It derailed right outside of Joplin. Amtrak tells us at CBS News, 447 passengers and 13 crew members were on board at the time. They also say five cars went off the tracks. The cause of that crash is now under investigation. In the midst of COVID-19, a lot of traditions have been changing due to the pandemic, but two groups were determined to make an iconic Fort Worth parade, bring in the holidays once again. And it still happened in 2020, even though they didn't have much time to pull it off. Ken Molestina shows us how they kept that tradition alive. The GM Financial Parade of Lights usually hosts around 150,000 people in downtown Fort Worth, but in the age of COVID, that can't happen this year. Well, it's a big day for college football in North Texas. A&M played Arkansas at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, and the Iron Skillet rivalry played out between SMU and TCU. SMU once again took home the coveted skillet, beating TCU 42 to 34. But the Iron Skillet wasn't the only thing at stake for today's game. Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson and Fort Worth Mayor Maddie Parker had a friendly wager on the game. And now Maddie Parker will wear an SMU jersey to the next Fort Worth City Council meeting, and she he has to send the Dallas City Council dessert for their next meeting. Our Keith Russell will have highlights from all the rivalry games that happened today in just a few minutes. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the State Fair of Texas. We have finally made it to State Fair Friday. I'm Madison Sawyer, and today I am live from the State Fair, bringing you all the ins and outs. After last year's drive through version, well, it's safe to say the fair is back this year and better than ever. Myself, Kennedy Walker, and Brittany Rainey are going to go through what is new this year, as well as the annual favorites. And, you know, I'm definitely going to be getting my hands on some fried food. 
The gates open up today at 10, and we know that plenty of people will rush right to the midway, pretty much right where I'm standing, to try to play one of the 72 games that the fair has on hand. 20 acres just south of downtown Dallas used to be home to one of the largest illegal dump sites in the state. But after years of rehabilitation, trash has been transformed into a treasure for the city. The land is now a biodiverse ecosystem, which has created a haven for birds and other wildlife. Madison got to check out the Trinity River Audubon Center and go bird watching as she kicks off our new series, Discover DFW. We are in the middle of the Great Trinity Forest, which is the largest urban bottomland hardwood forest in the country. Just a few miles from the downtown Dallas Mixmaster sits the Trinity River Audubon Center. We have tons of mammals here, white-tailed deer, coyotes, bobcats, um, some, some rabbits, and tons of reptiles and amphibians. But if you look up, a whole new world awaits exploration. Nearly 300 species of bird have been documented here. There's wading birds, there's songbirds, there's raptors, and it can be overwhelming at first, but if you're with someone who can teach you all the differences and identi you know, identification features, then it's a good, good way to start. My bird watching tour guides for the day, Jake Poinsett and Marcus Cole, both of whom have turned their love for the outdoors and birds into a career. So, Jake, I've never actually been bird watching before, so what is the first thing I need to be doing? Well, uh, I like to just take in my surroundings. Right now, we're located on our tree forest trail outside of a nice temporary wetland covered in black willow trees. And we've been hearing a lot of cardinals and tip mice and white eyed vireos, one of the migratory birds that just came back. And they rely on habitats like this. So, if you just look and listen, if you hear a bird, try to find it. And if you see some movement, uh, you know, follow with your eyes until it kind of stops moving for a little bit. And you can kind of focus in on it. I quickly learned the key to spotting my new flighty friends while hiking the center's five miles worth of trails was to listen. They are ubiquitous, so they're, they're everywhere. And it's amazing if you were to take birds away, you would notice that you don't hear their beautiful calls. And the Audubon Society is working to make sure that those beautiful bird songs and calls are always heard. And our mission is to protect birds in the places they need for today and tomorrow. And just to build a bridge for people to fall in love with wildlife. What I love about working here every day is seeing the natural beauty that is Dallas, Texas. Coming out here early in the morning and seeing the white-tailed deer, the fawns and the does strolling by, grazing. There's only one way to describe it. Peaceful. It's a, a way to escape the hustle and bustle. It is a, a great way to recreate and, and just find yourself in nature. It's a hidden gem. Uh, we get a lot of first timers out here and they all say the same thing. I said the same thing when I came out here. This is a beautiful place. I wish I would have discovered it earlier. Typically, the Trinity River Audubon Center has binoculars that you can actually borrow for bird watching, but due to COVID, you do need to bring your own. So if you're in need of a pair of binoculars before planning your trip to the National Audubon Society, they've actually created a helpful guide to binoculars on their website, from ones that aren't too expensive to recommendations from maybe your first pair of binoculars and even more. And we put a link to that guide on our website, cbsdfw.com.